Kim. Thank you so much. I would like to officially call this meeting to order at 6.01 p.m. Uh, Director Pipps, if you could do a roll call, please. Of course, Madam Mayor. Mayor James. Here. Councilman Goldsmith. Here. Councilman Trollinger. Present. Councilwoman Bryant Ward. Present. Councilman Jenkins. Present. Madam Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you so much. Would you all please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for Thank you very much. Council, if you've had a, a moment to look at the agenda and if it is suitable, I would entertain a motion to adopt the meeting agenda as presented. Madam Mayor. Yes. Councilman Brian Ward, Ward 3, I move that we adopt the meeting agenda for March 28, 2023 as presented. Thank you very much. Do I have a second? Sure. Thank you. All in favor, please indicate. Uh, Madam Mayor, I, I, I do have a correction. Sorry. Or a question. I, yes. I'm curious. Uh, there's some dates listed for different events, and, and, and I'm not sure if the dates are right. I mean, I'm trying to find the reference real quick. Um, it's a mark. I was going to go scroll down. Bear with me. Oh, yes. At the, on, on the, at the last page, 6.2, it says uh, April, April 24th ribbon cutting for Pine Grove. Wasn't that March 24th? Oh, that is for the um, meetings. Uh, that's for the meeting minutes. Yes. We're on the agenda right now. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, do you have any corrections no, to your agenda? No, All right. Thank you. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. This brings us to our first public hearing uh, this evening. And I will um, thank you for all for joining us. Before I officially call this public hearing to order, I would like to ask the acting town clerk to review the procedures of this hearing. Madam Clerk, could you, would you please review the procedures for this evening's public hearings? Certainly, Madam Mayor. Review of procedures. Town of La Plata public hearings are conducted in the following manner. A sign-in sheet is provided at the entry of council chambers for any public hearing attendees to register to speak if, that, if they have not already done so in advance. Registration to speak will end when the public hearing is opened. The presiding officer will call registered speakers to the podium. Speakers who have registered to speak in advance via the town webpage will be recognized prior to speakers who register upon arrival at the public hearing. At the discretion of the presiding officer, speakers' comments may be limited to three minutes and may not be yielded. Written documents for the record submitted in advance of the public hearing are provided to the presiding officer prior to the opening of the public hearing. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I would like to officially call this public hearing to order at 6.05 p.m. Madam Clerk, has the notice of public hearing been properly advertised? Yes, Madam Mayor. For the record, this public hearing was advertised in the Maryland Independent Newspaper in the March 17, 2023 issue, as reflected on the certificate of publication attached to the meeting agenda. Notice of this public hearing was also advertised on the town webpage. Thank you very much. Uh, will the town manager please provide uh, recommendations on behalf of the staff regarding resolution 23-08? Yes, Madam Mayor and Town Council, Bond Council is here this evening. Uh, Ms. Lindsay Rader, as well as Ms. Emily Metzler with uh, MuniCap. Uh, there was a memorandum uh, attached to the agenda, which I'm sure you were able to review. And if you have any questions, uh, we can provide, uh, we'll attempt to provide answers. Okay. Um, and then I uh, understand um, Mr. Griffin Burns is here to represent Dr. Horton. Mr. Burns, do you have any uh, information that you, additional information you would like to provide beyond what has already been presented by Funk and Bolton and Municor? Thank you very much. All right, Council, do we have any questions for uh, Ms. Now, yes, we're, and we're gonna get, we're gonna probably pepper you with questions. So, it's actually published in the March 10 petition on the Maryland Independent March March 7th. So, okay, March 10th. Thank, thank you yes. for that clarification. All right, it still uh, does 
meet the standards. So thank you very much. Um, Town Council, do you have any questions for Lindsay or um, Griffin on resolution 23-08? All right, hearing none. Uh, Madam Clerk, have you received any additional written statements to be included in the record? No, Madam Mayor, none have been received. And also, Madam Clerk, uh, could you please give me a list of people who might have signed up to speak this evening? Thank you very much. And that's not a whole lot. So, seeing that there are none, <laughs> I had to put my glasses on for that one. Seeing that there are none, I will ask council once last uh, one last time. Any questions for uh, uh, Mr. Burns or uh, Miss Lindsay there? And two of you, do you have anything to add? No, but we're happy to answer any questions as well when you get to the consideration of the legislation. All right. So with that. Uh, this concludes the public hearing on resolution 23-08 and um, I would make a motion we close this public hearing and record. Do I have a second? Aye. All in favor please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right that was a good one. Let's see if we can do it one more time. I would like to now call the public hearing on ordinance 23-08 to order at 6.08 p.m. The procedures will be the same as the last public hearing. Uh, Madam Clerk, has the notice of public hearing been properly advertised? Yes, Madam Mayor, for the record, this public hearing was advertised in the Maryland Independent newspaper in the March 10th, 2023 issue as reflected on the certificate of publication attached to the meeting agenda. Notice of this public hearing was also advertised on the town webpage. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Town Manager, would you provide recommendations on behalf of the staff regarding Ordinance 23-08? Yes, Madam Mayor, as previously stated, Bond Council, uh, Lindsay Rader, as well as Emily Metzler with MuniCap uh, is available if the council were to have questions. All right, thank you very much. And I uh, understand Mr. Burns, you're here representing DR Horton again. Do you have any other additional information you want for the to add for the ordinance? Okay. Council, any questions regarding ordinance 23-08? All right, uh, Madam Clerk, have you received any additional written statements to be included in the record? No, Madam Mayor, none have been received. Uh, and Madam Clerk just gave me a list of people who would like to speak tonight, and um, that would be zero. So moving on, uh, Council, last chance to ask any questions? All right. Any last words? Neither one? Okay, thank you very much. This concludes the public hearing on Ordinance 23-08. And the town council will hear no further comments or questions regarding this issue. I make a motion to close the public hearing and the record. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Oh, any discussion? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries and the public hearing is closed at 6.10 p.m. You guys are awesome. All right, we are going now to um, our next uh, item on the agenda, which would be the approval of the mi the minutes on March 21st. I understand that there might be some comment on this. Does anybody have any um, comments on uh, the <laughs> approval of the minutes? Uh, yes, I would. I guess I don't hear well, so I'm going to try it again. Um, <laughs> there were I, I just uh, curious. Um, it makes a reference to uh, the Pine Grove event on April 24th. Wasn't that, shouldn't the dates be March 24th? That sounds like that is since we haven't hit April 24th right. yet, but maybe we're going to do it again. Griff, are we going to do it again? Because it was spectacular. spectacular. And the same with the April 25th annual ga gala. And I, and, I, and, then, and then also it has April 25th. The two sets of minutes, I was a little confused on which one is which, so. 
We are just skipping forward, and uh, what what they did is they provided a PDF and and a, um, a Word document. Okay. So with that correction, so it should be March twenty fourth for um, the right, ribbon right. cutting, mm -hmm. and the gala was March twenty fifth. Right. All right. Would you like and to make a recommendation then? To I mean, a motion to. And then they also yeah, I would make a motion to approve the minutes as amended to include also the March twenty fifth was the town hall meeting on open or. Op op Opioids. Opioids there as well. And so with those amendments, I would uh, make a motion to approve the minutes of March 21st. Thank you very much. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Brings us to our section of public comment. If there's anyone who would like to speak tonight, I ask that you state your name, whether you're in the uh, whether you reside in the incorporated town limits, and please try to limit your comments to about three minutes. Anybody this evening? Right, thank you very much. We have two proclamations uh, today that we will be putting into the record. The first one is the founding of La Plata, which comes up on April 4th, 1888, where that's when it was founded. Whereas the official history of the village of La Plata began with its incorporation on April 4th, 1888, as recorded in the Maryland book, and whereas the founding and growth of La Plata is attributed in large part to the construction of the Baltimore and Pot Potomac Railroad and development by the Pennsylvania Railroad, and whereas the volunteers who serve on the Historic Preservation Commission of the town of La Plata dedicated their efforts to protecting and preserving historic sites significant to the history of La Plata and to educating residents and visitors to La Plata about La Plata's historic events. And whereas despite its growth in modern times, the town of La Plata retains its quaint small town spirit through its unique establishments, traditional events, and the collaboration of residents, businesses, nonprofits, and the town government to create a sustainable environment in which we can all thrive. Now, therefore, we, the Council of the Town of La Plata, do recognize April 4, 2023, as the 135th anniversary of the founding of the Town of La Plata, and do commend all of our citizens and visitors to explore the charm and history of our town. And it is signed by myself, Mayor Janine James, Councilman James Goldsmith, Councilman Matthew Trollinger, Councilwoman Evelyn Bryant Ward, and Councilman David Jenkins. 135 years young. And uh, I really encourage our residents and those in the surrounding area to come and tour the amazing caboose and the museum there that we have. They will be opening in April. And uh, so I think it's the first Saturday in April. I see Miss Miss Mudd here. First Saturday in April, it may be opening up, but they're opening up the uh, um, caboose. So it tells a lot of our history. And if you don't know the history of uh, La Plata, I gave you a little snapshot of what it is, but we used to be a train stop here. And uh, we were founded by Samuel Chapman back in 1888 after he came back trying to find a cure for his son's tuberculosis down in Argentina. And he fell in love with this river called La Plata. And when he came up here, it translated into La Plata. And, and you can always tell someone who's not a, a resident here when they say La Plata. So it is La Plata, but we are rich in history. And um, I really encourage everyone to find out a little bit more about our town. With that said, we go on to our next uh, proclamation, which is Arbor Day. Councilman Trollinger. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Whereas in 1872, the Nebraska Board of Agriculture established a special day to be set aside for the planting of trees, this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. And whereas Arbor Day is now observed around the world in Maryland on the first Wednesday of April and nationwide on the last Friday in April, 
And whereas trees can be a solution to combating climate change by reducing the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, reducing heating and cooling costs, moderating the temperature, cleaning the air, producing life-giving oxygen, and providing habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, countless other wood products, and whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community, and whereas the town of La Plata has been recognized by the Arbor Day Foundation as a Tree City USA for the third year with a second year growth award, and whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal, now therefore we, the council of the town of La Plata, do hereby proclaim April 5th, 2002, excuse me, 2023 is Arbor Day in the town of La Plata and urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands and to plant trees to gladden the heart and promote the well-being of this and future generations. So signed by the Council of the Town of La Plata, La Plata Janine James Mayor, James Goldsmith Councilman, Matthew Challenger Councilman, Evelyn L. Bryant Ward Councilwoman, and David M. Jenkins Councilman. Thank you very much. And I see Director Harrington is online. Do we have any uh, special plan planting um, coming up to recognize Arbor Day? Not to my knowledge. This is Director Harrington. Um, we haven't had quite time to discuss that since I've been out of the office, but we'll um, see what we can do. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank you, Councilman uh, Trollinger. Brings us to our monthly reports. Chief is up first. Do we have, uh, hopefully all of you have had the opportunity to review his report. And do we have uh, any questions for the Chief? Madam Mayor, uh, Councilman Jenkins from Ward 4. Thank you, Chief, again for the report. Uh, on one of the pages, you, there was some training, uh, the 40-hour crisis intervention training. Um, that's a great thing. Uh, would that ever be offered again to other officers on your force? Yeah, it's our goal to have every officer CIT trained. Uh, I would say we're probably at the 70% mark. Uh, we go to Baltimore County, one, because they're leaders in it, and two, because they are the size of their academy allows us to put more officers in at a time. So, uh, uh, we're we're getting down to the the last twenty five percent, but it's it's a priority for us. Terrific, and 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 and, and a very brief synopsis. What what is that training all about? Well, it's, I it's, can guess, but I'm just curious. Yeah, it's it's a lot about de escalation and interacting with people when they are in a mental health crisis, or interacting with that person who uh, uh, may be prone to uh, substance abuse, and it teaches them how to bring things down. Uh, there, there's a lot of skills, there's a lot of practical exercises that go along with it, but um, we find it a priority in the, the times that we live in to make sure officers are uh, as trained as possible. Uh, it, this doesn't make them mental health counselors, but it, it does help them de-escalate so we can buy some time and, and everybody can make better decisions. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions from council? All right, thank you, Chief. Thank you. All right. Okay. Just April 30th, we're having an autism awareness event at Wills Park. So uh, <clears throat> there'll be more information coming out, but if you could just kind of put it on your radar. That was amazing last year. <laughs> or the last time we did it, was it last year? Uh, yeah, last year. Yeah, it was, it was great. All right, um, uh, Director Harrington, do does council have any questions for Director Harrington? Councilman Mr. Brian Ward. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councilwoman Bright Ward, Ward 3. Director Harrington, how are we doing with the APFO and how are we um, progressing along with the new software that we were incorporating? So for the Adequate Public Facilities Ordinance, uh, that kind of got put on hold while I was out of the office. Um, I need to follow up with Mead and Hunt uh, to kind of talk about their progress and get back with them to put start putting the draft back together to proceed forward with that. And on the Municity software, we are closing out on phase two, and we will be moving into phase three, which is kind of the implementation training um, very, very shortly in the next couple of weeks. So that is progressing forward nicely. Director Harrington, do you have a launch date? Uh, we do not. Um, 
not a definitive one at this point. They said it would take about six months for the entire process to take place. Um, so we're thinking, you know, by the fall this year that we should have that up and running, hopefully. Councilman Bright Board, any other questions? All right, thank you very much. Councilman Jenkins. Thank you. Question. Councilman Jenkins, Ward 4. Thank you, Director Harrington. Just a follow-up question. Uh, your uh, code revisions include uh, Chapter 170, streets and sidewalks. Uh, could you just, I guess, probably a little more explanation of uh, the, you make a comment about complete streets. Uh, uh, what do you envision in, in those revisions? So the idea is to look at the chapters comprehensively and update um, accordingly to make sure that we are kind of referring to the complete streets um, template. Uh, like I said, I had done some research into the um, model ordinance for complete streets and looking at other areas and how they have that handled. I don't think any of our chapters, uh, the sign code's been updated um, more recently, but the other two have not been updated in a significant way for many years. So it's a complete rewrite. Thank you, and I'm and I'm I'm encouraged by the reference to the complete streets and that template and those uh, model ordinance. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Thank you, Director Harrington. And it is, uh, as I said last week, it is so nice to have you back. So, thank um, you. Pace yourself. Pace yourself. <laughs> All right, Director Stahl. You are up next. Does anyone have any questions for Director Stahl? Thank you, Madam, Madam Mayor. Councilman Jenkins, Ward 4. Are the, trash, are the new trash trucks in, in service? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I guess I lost track of that. Well, what happened, um, we've gotten them in. You're right, I remember and that. And at the same time, we've implemented a new, we actually, because we've hired some extra drivers, now we're actually switching trash trucks. So you may not always see the new truck on your route okay. because what we're doing now, instead of sending the driver and the entire crew to the landfill, we're actually taking an empty truck out because we have spare trucks now that we will take that truck out when it's full. Then the one driver will get in the full truck, take it to the landfill while the crew keeps on picking up trash. So it has allowed us to improve uh, efficiency a lot, but it does also add some of the older trucks back mm -hmm. into the route. So you may not see the new trucks, but they are here. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Director Starr, how are we doing on staffing? We still um, are, we currently have 31 positions filled. Um, we still have several positions that we're interviewing for that we're working on. <laughs> But we are um, maintaining a reasonable level of service. So I think we're getting better with being able to hire. So we, we have, uh, we just hired a full-time custodian. So we have uh, Marie Roberts accepted our new position as our lead custodian in that. So that will be helpful to us for keeping the buildings. She worked for us as a contractor, but we've now brought her on as an employee, which has been a positive ad for us. We have um, resumes coming in for a GIS specialist. We have resumes coming in for an inspector position. We hope to make those hires in the next few weeks, but we do think that all of the positions, and then we do have to backfill. We're, we're going to allow some of our guys hopefully to move up into some uh, tech two level positions, which will then free up um, some more uh, new hires at the lower <laughs> tech one level. So we, we're holding our own in this situation. We haven't had any uh, mass exodus. Uh, we've been able to keep the staff that we have, so that's been positive. But I feel good about our staffing levels at this point. Do you have an, a number for the turnover rate that you've experienced? I'm sorry? Do you have a turnover a number for your turnover rate? I don't off the top of my head. I can certainly get that information to you. I don't... Um, if, if we have, it has been always generally at the lower levels. We we tend to, when we hire, it, it's always been generally the trash stores at the senior level positions. We've actually retained most of our employees. We don't lose them as much. And um, as of recently, because we've had a, 
a lack of people getting uh, passing the exams for both water and wastewater. Um, we haven't lost anyone uh, in recent memory to the uh, to the larger uh, utilities, which which we have had in the past. I mean, we are generally a hiring ground for DC water for WSSC, and that's that's really not going to change. But we do have. Um, good operators that want to stay with us, and and that's positive. But we've we really have a very good crew of individuals now at the uh, wastewater treatment plant. We had two of them take the exams last Friday, so we were very positive about that. Hopefully, they will do well on the exam. But um, you know, we're steadily training, steadily uh, increasing the ability for people to move up, and hopefully, we can do that in the future. One last question. I haven't had any complaints um, about the rain that's coming down from Pine Grove onto Route 6. Um, how is, has it well, changed? If you've noticed, uh, the uh, they have applied the final coat of asphalt now at um, uh, La Plata Parkway uh, at the intersection of Charles Street. And so now the drainage problems that we were experiencing were that two inches of water mm -hmm. now, now that is draining off the okay. road since they put the final asphalt surface in there. And so we're um, very pleased that we no longer have that kind of ponding effect there. So we, we did work with them on that. Uh, all right, if I could, good. I'd just like to point out that our percentages, too, on the sale of water, if you'll notice from the report, have gone up significantly. So a lot of the challenges that we were having, we are getting a lot more of the meters replaced. And so the numbers have been going up and our percentage of sales has also going up as well. Thank you. Thank you. And, Thank you. you know, Director oh. Stahl, one last thing. I did want to commend you and the chief and... Uh, Director Harrington um, and Jeff on all uh, coming together on a recent event that you all collaborated, made sure that uh, what needed to get done got done. And um, it was nice to see that everyone was working together to Absolutely. solve a problem. So thank you for that. Yeah, I also would like to point out, you will see in next week's uh, weekly report, the street list for paving. And we are gonna begin paving in a few weeks. So we look forward to doing that. The contract that we have, um, interestingly enough, now the county's piggybacking on us. <laughs> uh, so we we were pleased to see that um, they're now interested in our contract. So it is positive, and we will move forward. So you'll notice the street list next week. And if you have any questions, please get with me. Thank you very much. All right, the treasury report. Uh, do you have a come on deal? And am I correct in saying this is the first one since Treasurer that's like public? Yes. Okay, well, thank you for that. Do we have um, any questions for our Treasurer? Just thank you. Yeah. We got it. Good. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for all your hard work. I know it's a, and, a, and you're continuing to do that. And you've got a great uh, team oh, yes. with you, with Martha and, and uh, the others up there. So thank you very much. Um, you did such, oh. Do you have a question? Yeah. So is this the format that we can expect going forward as opposed to the month, the variance reports? Well, actually, the treasurer's report that you normally get, that's a cash flow report. And unfortunately, I have only gotten through September of last year. Once I catch up and able to verify that information, I'll be giving you that report along okay. with other details um, within the expenses and incomes for okay. um, the type of funds. Um, I did want to say one thing. We had a request to change our budget schedule very slightly. So the um, originally we had the general fund um, budget to be done on April 18th. It will now be the enterprise fund and the general fund will be on April 25th. Thank you very much for letting us know. Appreciate that. Great job. All right. Next is... <laughs> Our Director Phipps, Legislative Services. Do we have any questions for Director Phipps? All right. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. And then here is an inaugural report uh, from, I mean, really, an, I don't know if we've ever had uh, a Director of Human Resources here. So welcome. Thank and you. we promise to be kind. 
it, it gets worse as time goes on. Uh, so I look you, forward to it. <laughs> does anybody have any questions for uh, Director Kennedy? Go ahead. Thank you, Council uh, Jenkins from Ward 4. Again, again thanks for, for your efforts in the first one. This was great. Just, a, I guess, a, a comment uh, or for your comment. As you get into it more and, and you look at the benefits, um, will there be some kind of, uh, I know, isn't there already an, an employee assistance program? And if so, does that include wellness and, and those kind of uh, uh, activities as well? Or could it? In yes. The future. So we do have an EAP through um, through our medical insurance. Um, what an EAP does is it's not just um, stereotypically people believe it's just for like substance abuse and alcohol, right. um, but it does smoking cessation. There's child care services to help with financial aid. Um, I mean, it really covers a, a lot a, a breadth of things, and health and wellness is is one of those um, services that you can provide, uh, including um, mental health counseling. I mean, it is a pretty exhaustive list, but yes, we do offer that to the employees. Thank you for that clarification. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? They took it easy on me today. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're well welcome. done. Very thorough. Thank Appreciate you. that. All right, matters of council discussion. We've got the chief on up. Come on down. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I want to thank Karina for making that budget schedule change. We have three commanders who are going to be at the Maryland Municipal League's Police Executive Training Conference uh, that Tuesday. So uh, it prevents us from having to drive back from Ocean City and then go back that night. Uh, the department was budgeted for 25 officers in FY23. Since the approval of the budget, the council approved a 26 position. That position was the second full-time officer at the University of Maryland uh, Charles Regional Medical Center as part of the public-private partnership program. With the current difficulties in hiring qualified police officers, we treat hiring like the NFL draft. Okay. Uh, we take the best applicant on the board at the time. And we know if we leave anyone out there, if they're qualified and a few weeks later, they will not be. Uh, they will be grabbed by someone else. Up to a week ago, the agency had one open position. Uh, we had an applicant come along with 14 years of experience in Virginia. And we really felt that this person would be a good fit for us and bring some needed experience into the patrol ranks. So we hired uh, Ronald Astogi. He is currently in the Prince George's County Municipal Police Academy's Comparative Compliance class. That's five weeks of training that kind of bridges you from what you knew in Virginia into what is expected to you here in Maryland. He will then go on an abbreviated field training program and should be available for solo patrol by mid-April. As a council is aware, we have uh, two officers in the Anne Arundel County Police Academy, and they are scheduled to graduate in mid-June. From there, they will go through a 16-week field training program. Officer Mary, and she goes by Becca, if you've uh, interacted with her, is scheduled to enter the Anne Arundel County Police Academy in mid-April. The Anne Arundel County Police Chief has graciously given us two seats in that academy class. Uh, I often receive comments from members of the public and the council about the quality of police officers that the La Plata Police Department has been hiring. There's really two uh, parts to that success. The first is the strength of our recruitment team locating quality candidates. And the second is the quality training in 21st century policing received at the Anne Arundel County Police Academy. We have a high quality candidate who can attend the police academy with Ms. Cheney. Academy seats are sometimes difficult to come by, especially ones that have free slots uh, that provide such good training. I spoke with uh, Treasurer Larson, and we've determined that if we're able to hire one above what we have slotted right now, uh, through salary savings, there would be no budget implication this fiscal year. The agency has requested uh, several additional sworn slots in the upcoming budget. Uh, to help us meet the 60% increase of calls for service we saw last year. Uh, getting people trained up quickly and properly is of paramount importance for our agency and our community. Also, history tells me that somehow, some way, we'll need to replace somebody in the near future for whatever reasons because of the turnover in policing. Uh, it's important to remember that if we do hire one above and with uh, 
Officer Cheney, uh, they will not be available for solo patrol until March of 2024. As how long it takes us to get somebody hired, get them through the police academy, and get them through the San Jose model of uh, 16 weeks of field training. Um, I think it's also important to note that we're seeing a trend in policing. I know several agencies that are now allowing uh, departments to hire 10% above their sworn staffing levels in order to uh, uh, make sure you have sufficient staffing on the street. So it's our, our request to be able to hire this individual, get them into the Anne Arundel County Police Academy and uh, allow our agency to, to move forward with staffing. Thank you very much, Chief. Any questions for the Chief on this topic? You know, uh, more than one. Uh, I understand you've talked about your recruitment team. Is that team a select group or is that everybody on the force? Well, that's a, I think that's a really good question because we do have a team that, and we met today with uh, with Monica, and we kind of went over how we want to move forward with a, a really good rec recruitment uh, program. We just ran an advertisement, several advertisements on Facebook, and we got zero applications out of it. Where we're getting our applicants from is from friends of officers who currently work for the agency who are telling them this is a good place to work i like being here so and and i really attribute that to why we're getting such good applicants because people only want to work with people who are competent so uh although we do have this recruitment team that goes to job fairs and and does other things uh word of mouth by our individual officers is really where we're doing our best recruiting Thank you. One other question. Do you have a projection of retirements the next three or four years? Um, well, that would really depend on how the pension system uh, pans out. And and I, I, I yeah, I, Detective Godwin is talking about it frequently. Uh, you know, I'm no spring chicken, so uh, it, I'm sure we're going to see some retirements in the future. It's it's things that we'll track. Uh, yes, thank you. Matt Trollinger, Ward 2. Um, I'm happy to hear that there's no budget implications for the upcoming fiscal year. And this might be a question for our treasurer, but how does that how does that work if we're hiring above? And that might just be my naivete, but how does that actually pan out that way? Three quarters of the year. And the position that they were not staff but it was for the hospital, which we do receive uh, 62.5% of that salary and uh, that cost. Thank you for that. Makes sense. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions for Chief? All right, so I'm looking for a consensus to move this forward to legislation uh, a little bit in a little bit. Uh, as one goes. Yeah, forward thing. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. We have five yeses. Thank you very much, but don't go anywhere yet. Yeah. How about one more time, Chief, with, right. uh, with the department vehicle? Budget? Yeah, thank you. Uh, the agency needs to purchase four new cruisers. The cruisers will be uh, Dodge Durango's. Bless you. Uh, in the current uh, budget, the agency requested three new cruisers. Uh, we typically utilize the Southwest model of fleet management. Keeping the same model vehicle is much easier to track trends and issues that pop up. Moreover, you only need to keep one model of parts in stock for maintenance. Unfortunately, Ford has does not have a current state of Maryland contract. Uh, the Ford utility interceptors have been a very uh, dependable force with uh, rare exceptions. Uh, we typically buy our cruisers early in the budget year, usually uh, in August or July. However, Ford stopped accepting orders early in FY23. Uh, there are agencies that I know, I spoke with the Chief of Cumberland the other day, he has Ford cruisers that have been on order for over a year and have not been delivered to him. And I'm sure some of it's supply chain issues. Um, our FY22 uh, purchase of cruisers was slow to get uh, upfitted because of microchip issues with Motorola radios. 
This caused our upfitting cost of $66,275 budgeted for FY22 to be paid in FY23. Unfortunately, no, none of the funds uh, that were for that uh, identified purchase were carried over from the 22 to 23 budget. The agency's budget surplus for FY22 was returned to the general fund. Uh, as you know, uh, the La Plata Police Department had a cruiser about six weeks ago that was deemed a total loss, uh, and it was a low mileage cruiser. We're still awaiting the settlement from legit. Um, we also lost a cadet car, which was an older cruiser approximately six months ago because of a collision. Uh, the agency's requesting to purchase four Dodge Durangos, three that were budgeted and one to replace the total frontline cruiser under the Maryland state contract from Hertrick Fleet for $161,662. The, uh, we will budget the upfitting of these vehicles in the upcoming uh, year because I'm anticipating delivery late June, early July for these Durangos. Thank you very much. Have you had a, uh, the Dodge Durangos before? We have not. Now, there's a, as I put in the memo, there's a history with Dodge Chargers uh, that just, they're, they're cheap on the front end, but the back end costs are exorbitant to where agencies, which there are agencies that have replaced their entire fleet in one year because of the maintenance cost. The Sheriff's Department has uh, piloted several of these Durangos and are reporting good results. When I talk to chiefs around the state, uh, uh, although they, they haven't had the Durangos for a long time, they're not seeing the issues that they had with their Dodge Chargers. And really, I, you, we only buy things that are rated by the Michigan State Police as roadworthy for police vehicles. So out there is the Tahoe that's running about $52,000 on the state bid. They're telling us to expect to pay $47,000 for these uh utilities that we're currently driving from Ford when that bid comes out. So the Durangos for us, it's it's worth piloting, give it a try and, and see how they hold up. The only other thing out there is a Dodge Charger. And uh, just with uh, the the history of those, I, I, I don't think it's prudent for us to go in there. One other question that I have, uh, Chief. So we have not received yet from Legit what the cost would be for replacement of uh, that vehicle. No, we haven't. Do you, uh, and I know, I'm sure you've spoken with the treasurer, do you think that it is going to come in uh, cost neutral, is going to be a bump up? Um, you've already budgeted for three. Uh, so how is that one going to? So the only thing I can tell you is when we had another uh, few years ago, we had another low mileage cruiser that was totaled. Uh, we we pretty much broke even because they also gave us the uh, money for what was in the upfitting, the emergency equipment and other things. We were able to recycle some of that from this total cruiser. So. Between that and the radio that we're not going to have to buy because we already harvested that, uh, I, I I don't have a crystal ball, but legit's usually pretty uh, uh, pretty fair with their estimates. You don't normally have to go back and argue with them. Thank you very much. Any uh, members of council question? Go ahead. Thank you, uh, Dave Jenkins, Ward Four. Thank you, Chief, for the information. Um, this is probably a, a naive question on my part. So the Dodge Chargers or sedans? Yes, sir. And so the Durangos are basically yeah, like an SUV, right? Yeah, it's very, very similar to what we drive right now, about that that size. And so, again, maybe a dumb question. So if Dodge is the manufacturer, is there any concern about how they make Durangos versus Chargers? There's always concern, but what I I rely on chiefs that already have okay. these vehicles, and and they're pretty close to don't, don't touch them, don't buy them, don't get them. I hear that all the time about the Chargers. Uh, but the ones that I know that have the Durangos, and there's, there's only a few out there who have had them, they're not seeing the the front end issues that have come with the chargers to where the suspension issues, the tire issues, the brake issues. So uh, right now, it's about the only thing out there. That was my next question. And so uh, how many miles do you typically can, can gain out of a new vehicle? Uh, that's, that's a good question. So when we had the Chevy Impalas, the smaller sedans, mm -hmm. We would see, and we used to work with DR very closely when he worked for Public Works, we would start seeing significant investments into repairs 
around the 80,000 uh, mile mark. And what those were typically were uh, transmissions. So the question is, you got 80,000 miles on a car. Is it worth putting the three, four thousand dollar transmission? And, and we had to make those decisions. And it really depended on the health of the fleet at the time. So when we talked to the council about moving from sedans to the SUVs, mm -hmm. we said we really expected, and we're still still believe that that we're going to get 150,000 front mile, at least 150,000 frontline patrol miles, which is there's a lot of idle time in, in patrol on these vehicles. Uh, mine has 109,000 on it, and it runs runs great. So we're anticipating, uh, if you really looked at a price per mile, hmm. we think these SUVs are much cheaper to operate than the sedans were. And the maintenance, the maintenance is done, uh, you, you outsource maintenance? Well, uh, director stalls people do a lot of the maintenance okay. and then we'll go to little plate of tire if there's you know they're really busy or whatever and then martin's is available too but uh uh okay. we haven't had to have a whole lot of maintenance other than the the preventive maintenance on the the ford with rare exception and then the upfitting will be will be done next fiscal year for the vehicles yeah I, there's yeah okay. i can't they won't let me purchase okay. now so and, and just hold it wherever so yeah we'll build that into the next budget and how much does it cost typically to upfit uh it's usually about it depends on how much we can harvest out of older vehicles and, and transfer over but the emergency equipment the markings it runs us about fourteen thousand, and and uh you know the radio systems now we just moved to this new radio system that uh, emergency services they they because they do all the dispatching. They're the ones who gave us the specs. So for the most part, unless we're adding an additional vehicle, we're at the point now where we're recycling and reharvesting. Sorry, I talk with my hands sometimes. <laughs> we're, we're reharvesting some of this stuff and we're buying a $150 new wiring harness, but the, the, you know, the $4,000 investment in the radio just moves from one cruiser to the next. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? So I'm looking for a consensus to move forward uh, so that we could purchase these. Uh, Councilman Goldsmith, Councilman Challenger. Councilman Bryant Ward. Yes. Councilman Jenkins. Yes. Mayor James is a yes, and we have the consensus. We'll move it forward to legislation. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Council. I appreciate it. All right. That brings us to legislation resolution 23-08. Mr. Town Manager. Oh, yes, Madam Mayor, Town Council. Modification of the special taxes imposed in the Heritage Green Special Taxing District and related matters. This is the second reading and it is for consideration of adoption. A resolution concerning modification of the special taxes imposed in the Heritage Green Special Taxing District and related matters for the purpose of supplementing and amending resolution 09-8 adopted by the Council of the Town of La Plata on September 22, 2009 and effective on September 22, 2009 in order to approve and adopt an amendment and restatement of the 2009 rate and method identified herein in order to reset certain components of the methodology by which special taxes are imposed on certain classes of property in the Heritage Green Special Taxing District and to make certain other modifications provided for therein, making certain findings and determinations providing for rules of construction with regard to resolution 09-8 as supplemented and amended and generally providing for matters relating to such special taxes. Thank you very much. So do I have a motion to accept resolution 23-08 as presented? Madam Mayor. Yes. Councilwoman Brian Ward, Ward 3. I move that we adopt resolution 23-08, supplementing and amending resolution 09-8, modification of the special taxing imposed on Heritage Green special taxing, taxing district and related matters. Okay, thank you. And do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Just again, this this again, this is just for that. The district is basically Pine Grove, and it doesn't affect the town's tax rate or any threat or any. Um, it doesn't affect our bonding ability or anything like that. Oh. Correct. Correct. All right. 
All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Motion carries. Here that we. brings us to. No. No. OK. If you're not deviating from your typical practice. Or... We're good. Sorry. No worries. Um, brings us to ordinance 23-08. Yes, Madam Mayor, Town Council, increasing to $65 million, the aggregate principal amount of the special tax obligation authorized to be issued by Ordinance 09-15 with respect to the Heritage Green Special Taxing District and related matters. This matter is for a second reading and for consideration of adoption. An ordinance concerning increasing to $65 million, the aggregate principal amount of the special tax obligation authorized to be issued by ordinance 09-15 with respect to the Heritage Green Special Taxing District and related matters. For the purpose of supplementing and amending ordinance 09-15 passed by the Council of the Town of La Plata on September 22nd, 2009 and effective on October 8th, 2009 in order to increase the maximum aggregate principal amount of the special tax obligation as defined in ordinance 09-15 authorized to be issued with respect to the Heritage Green Special Taxing District to $65 million, thereby in effect increasing the maximum aggregate principal amount of bonds identified in Ordinance 09-15 to be issued to $61,248,400 and given effect to the prior issuance of the MW. QFA note identified in Ordinance 09-15, making certain findings and determinations, providing for a single identified official to act in certain circumstances provided for in Ordinance 09-15, providing that the Chief Executive Officer, as identified, of the Town of La Plata, the town, be executed order by executed order may authorize any town official or employee to impress or affix and attest to the town seal of any bonds or any other agreements, documents, or instruments provided for in or contemplated by Ordinance 09-15, providing for the rules of construction with regard to Ordinance 09-15 as supplemented and amended and generally providing for matters relating to the bonds. Very well said. All right. Do I have a motion to accept Ordinance 23-08 as presented? Madam Mayor, young goals of Ward 1. I make a motion to accept Ordinance 23-08 as presented. Do I have a second? Second. It was the dramatic pause, Grim. Your heart, I see it. Uh, any discussion? Okay, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. You okay, Griff? All right. <laughs> I thought I might get you on there. All right, we go on to um, emergency ordinance 23-10. Yes, Madam Mayor, uh, as you stated, Emergency Ordinance 23-10, Amendment to the Town of La Plata Fiscal Year 2023 Financial Plan Budget, La Plata Police Department personnel. This is for consideration of adoption. An ordinance concerning amendment to the Town of La Plata Fiscal Year 2023 Financial Plan Budget, uh, La Plata Police Department personnel for the purpose of amending the Town of La Plata Fiscal Year 2023 Financial Plan Budget to accept appropriate and authorize expenditures related to the execution of a memorandum of understanding with the University of Maryland Charles Regional Medical Center and all matters related thereto. Uh, Mr. Town Manager, do I need to suspend something before then? Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, I just wanted to hear you read this first. So um, I don't have the verbiage for that. So if you would like to say it, I will say ditto. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me uh, pull up our town code real quick, if you'll bear with me. Madam Mayor, I believe you want to refer to the Charter Chapter 13-19, Actions on Ordinances, Resolutions, and Other Matters. That's Section D. 
I move to suspend based on chapter 13-19 of the charter. Of the charter. 13-19 of the charter. Do I have a second? Second. All right. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. Now we go to your uh, your supplement ordinance 23 dash. I mean, the emergency ordinance 23 dash 10. And I will not make you read that again. Yes. Can you explain what you just suspended? Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, Town Council, the reason, and since this is an emergency ordinance, it requires that we suspend the provisions within our code so that it can be uh, considered for adoption on a first reading. As an ordinance typically has two readings. In the event of an emergency ordinance, we need to uh, suspend that provision so that it would be eligible for a okay. reading and consideration on the same evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, I have uh, emergency ordinance 23-10. Do I have a motion? Madam Mayor, yes. I move that we accept, adopt emergency ordinance 23-10, amendment of the town of La Plata fiscal year 2023 financial plan budget for the La Plata Police Department personnel for consideration. All right. <laughs> Do I have a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Brings us to resolution 23-11. Yes, Madam Mayor and Town Council, the Plato Police Department vehicle purchase. This will be for consideration of adoption, a resolution concerning La Plata Police Department vehicle purchase for the purchase, or excuse me, me as you were, <laughs> for the purpose of authorizing the town manager to enter into a contract purchase agreement of utility vehicles for La Plata Police Department and all matters relating thereto. Thank you very much. Do I have a motion to accept resolution 23-11 as presented? Madam Mayor, I would make a motion to approve resolution 23-11, the Plata Police Department vehicle purchase as presented. Thank you very much. Do I have a second? A second. second. All right. Great. Enthusiastic. All in favor? Oh, any discussion? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Brings us to our new business, commission reports. Council Nothing goes. went on. Okay. Councilman Trollinger. Uh, nope, we have a meeting scheduled for the end of this upcoming month, but our meeting last month was uh, suspended. So, thank you very much, Councilman Bryant Ward. Mm -hmm. All right, Councilman Jenkins. A new report from Parks and Rec will we'll be meeting uh, early in April. Thank you very much. And I have a couple things for my report. This Saturday is April. First, and we are opening our farmers market, and also one of our businesses, the Mater Material Girls Quit. Quilt Boutique is celebrating 20 years, and they are having some festivities there, right there on uh, on Crane Highway. So drop by and uh, you know, continue. Wish them continued success in their endeavors. Uh, April 10th is ice cream with the Easter Bunny here at Town Hall from 11 to 1. Uh, as I mentioned last week, uh, April 11th is our junior mayor that will be coming here. You're going to want to check out this uh, remarkable young lady here. April 12th, we were the Charles County Sheriff's Office is doing their annual crime watch kickoff, which everyone is invited to. I know that uh, members of the police department will be there. I will be there as well. That's 7 p.m. And Chief, am I correct in saying it's at the Legion? It is at the Legion, yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. And then, of course, mark your calendars for April 29th is Celebrate La Plata 12 to 4 with those amazing bed races. So you do not want to miss that. And I have it on good authority that the weather is going to be spectacular. So with that, um, that's the end of my report. I, I would like to adjourn this meeting at 7 o'clock. Have a great week. Thank you for attending.